thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to be here. Yeah. So basically, um, in general, when we talk about superconducting qubits and the full procedure, in the end, we care mostly uh, uh, about uh, having some access to the quantum computer by just having everything working, um, such as a Qiskit client and who just does quantum operations. But basically, in as probably most of you know here, that's not basically a given. But in the end, the control devices connected with the experiments have to provide us um, nice gate fidelities and basically the good control over the experiment. And so we uh, here focus mainly on this part. Um, also, how can we use closed loop optimization in order to achieve even higher gate fidelities? So we use uh, superconducting circuits and especially the transmon qubits, which are basically the variant of the LC oscillator um, with just one Josephson junction in the circuit. And therefore we have like this um, new modified potential um, with the zero one transition um, having a slightly different frequency than the one two transition where the one two transition is um, reduced um, by the anharmonicity of the qubit. So, and here are some pictures of how our qubits look in the lab, um, where you mainly see the capacitive plates, and which are then connected via a Josephson junction. And those qubits reach, um, for, in our lab, nice fidelities for single qubit qubits of 200 microseconds in the T1, and actually T2 um, in best cases, but um, reaching almost two times T1. So, but actually we are now interested in coupling multiple qubits together and performing entangling gates. For that, we are looking at a two qubit architecture where we have fixed frequency qubits, um, which are then coupled via a coupler, which is tunable in the frequency. And so the qubits, have um, dedicated drive lines, which can be used then for the single qubit control. And the coupler basically only has the flux control and which we use for employing the entangling gate. So um, the gate of interest is a controlled phase gate. So basically implementing the unitary where we only want to have a phase shift on the one one state. And if we look and how we perform that, we actually place like in idling mode, our coupler um, at a high frequency. So basically here at a lower external flux value and then tune the qubit into, or this coupler into resonance with the qubits. And by hybridization uh, between qubit and coupler states and passing the avoided crossing, we actually get shifts in qubit frequencies. So if we now look here at the single excitation manifold, what's happening is, okay, we are only getting single qubit shifts. So basically alpha and better for qubit one and qubit two. If we, however, then further look into the two excitation manifold, um, we get additional contributions, mainly because we have um, the second excited state of the coupler. So this red line coming in there, uh, further pushing down um, the frequency of the one, one state, which gives us a conditional frequency shift, which we can then um, use to employ our control Z gate, especially if we then uh, apply further virtual Z rotations in order to do a frame rotation so that we are left with our desired unitary. So this act like this model, can be nicely uh, like compared to the experiment um, and we get a nice model matching um, when we compare it. And also like we see that the ZZ can be strongly tuned. So basically from 20 kilohertz at the sweet spot here at 0 0.35 um, up to actually 150 megahertz in ZZ rate. 
So in principle, to employ now a controlled phase gate, um, what do we have to do? So of course, we have to acquire the correct ZZ entangling phase. We have to correct also these single qubit phases. But we also have to ensure that we don't have leakage to especially the coupler states after we, ex we did our gate. And we have to somehow cope um, for the reduced coherence and during the interaction because we are more sensitive to flux noise of the coupler. Um, so what we are doing for or what we investigated here is actually how does the pulse shape actually uh, influence the performance of our gate. So I guess as a native experimentalist, you would start with such a Gaussian square pulse in order to tune into this resonance and back out. And being a easily controllable um, parametrization, um, we see, okay, here, like for a given um, time, it actually performs possibly well. But if we then use other parametrizations, such as a Fourier series parametrization, employing five parameters, which don't have like their direct um, calibrational um, methods, or even piecewise constant optimizations, we can significantly um, reduce the time required for a certain fidelity. And so in general, there is like a trade-off between the parameters we want to calibrate and the fidelity we can achieve. And in order to then get like now our calibrated pulse and optimized pulse, we use now optimization schemes, um, such as closed loop optimization, where for a given um, parameterization, we sample a pulse, then test that on the chip and basically measure the fidelity. And based on that intel, um, we update the next pulse and hopefully get a new better pulse. So let's have a look at the, me the fidelity measurements we are using. So basically, we are using two qubit randomized benchmarking for that, which um, consists out of a Clifford sequence. And this Clifford se sequence um, has the special feature that the last gate is actually an inverse gate of all the before gates such that effectively we have a pseudo identity gate. And so one of these Clifford gates is actually decomposed then into several single qubit and two qubit rotations. So that in the end, if we get a, uh, take the um, population of the, our initial state, the ground state, and plot uh, that as a function of the number of Cliffords, um, we see a monotonic decrease, which gives us indications of the fidelity of the qubit. And for the optimization, what we are actually using is only one given length of Clifford, oops, one given length of Clifford sequences, um, such as here indicated by the dashed line. And from that, we can get a proxy what is the fidelity at a given point. And for the experts, we are kind of combining RBs and interleaved RBs to be a bit more sensitive to the controlled phase gate. So now, actually, as we are here on the control electronics, let's actually take a small look at the com like complexity uh, we have to do when we do the waveform synthesis. So let's take here one Clifford gate, and effectively, that is so here is what we would want to play on the device. So actually the pulses that arrive on the qubit with oscill fast oscillations as the qubit drives and then these adiabatic pulses. Um, but basically, if we would sample all of this fully, then yeah, there is a lot of waveform memory that has to be first sampled and then decomposed. So that would be quite costly. And here, um, is basically where uh, like the local oscillator helps us um, to first decouple basically um, these challenges or like the oscillation so that we have only an envelope. But basically, even though we are looking now here at two Y90 degree pulses, um, those two envelopes still have a different phase, which re would require a different sampling. 
And so basically that is due to the frame change introduced by the control phase gate. And therefore we have to um, also update kind of the like the phase of the um, oscillator in between steps, which is luckily a feature that is nicely supported by the Zurich Instruments devices. And however, this comes then also at the cost of FPGA instructions, um, which might give like where one has to find the trade-off, especially as we see if we are going to higher fidelity gates, and there is actually kind of a uh, unbeneficial scaling in the, <laughs> the number of gates that we require just for like the longest sequence in an RB. And if we are for, for single qubit gates actually kind of reaching close to the four nines and 10,000 gates for the, oh, like several 10,000 gates would be required. And similar actually, if you're going for the three nines um, in a two qubit RB case. And so basically as we are, um, have to, um, yeah, also want to average over different uh, sequence lengths and have further randomizations. Uh, yeah, we are actually close to hitting the boundaries of FPGA devices, what is currently capable. But I guess here we also have current plans with Zurich Instruments how to nicely improve that in the future. Um, okay, so that is um, on the randomized benchmarking part. So now let's go on to the optimizer part. So here we use mainly um, the CMA ES optimizer, which is a, a population-based optimizer and generating a population for a given generation, improving that, uh, trying to improve the sampling um, such that you're actually converging from a suboptimal point closer um, to the optimal. And this algorithm in general for our needs is quite nicely um, suited, especially because it is sensitive to correlations between the parameters and is noise resilient, mainly due to the fact that you're comparing um, measurements during one generation only, and therefore you're less sensitive to like long-term drifts of um, parameters or noise in your environment. So we are using the RB-based cost function and also this insensitive to changes between generations can be used also to adapt the Clifford sequences in order to be actually or have some sensitivity adaptation as you move forward um, in the um, optimization and result in higher fidelity gate. Okay, so now let's look again at these three um, pulse shapes and see how they are actually performing in the experiments. So starting with the Gaussian square pulse, um, we actually see, okay, we can generate uh, controlled phase gates um, and we see RB characteristics, but basically we get like a error of, or a fidelity of 95%, which is probably not fully state-of-the-art at the moment. So, but now let's take um, the Fourier series pulses and see how well those perform. So if we do an optimization here, that is basically the curve. If we use our optimizer, what points we're sampling at the dash or at these lines, um, like we are changing our cost function. So basically that's why we have these sudden jumps. But we see it actually nicely converges to a certain point, um, calibrating these eight parameters, the amplitude, width of the pulse, the Fourier parameters, and the uh, qubit Z rotations. So using this optimization, we actually get to already quite nice, or gate fidelities of 99.4% um, using this optimization. So now let's actually look further how does a piecewise constant pulse opt, um, perform? And so here we have, again, nice convergence, however, significantly more parameters. So the piecewise constant pulse has 
was parameterized with 17 bins. And we see that it basically takes also somewhat of a longer time to fully converge to its final state. But actually that is beneficial for us because we can reduce the gate error by roughly a factor of three and basically get very nice uh, or get a gate error of 99.7%. So, but basically the interesting thing of this pulse is it changed slightly, but um, like the main contributions is what we see that there is like some non like non symmetry involved by this piecewise constant pulse, and like there is like a certain undershoot which cope to some degree of flux distortions, and that might be in the line, and that we have also further characterized using um, cryoscope measurements directly on the device. And we want to see if we can correct that with the HDAWG. So basically we use this Ramsey type sequence where we change the length of the pulses in between um, in order to measure kind of the um, response of our flux line, which actually has quite a long decay time if you look up to the last um, percent um, of up to two microseconds. And yeah, so now with the AWG, we can actually correct that um, first with um, exponential filters and then also further using the um, FAR filters um, to actually be within half, like half a percent and also the sensitivity of our noise uh, measurement capabilities um, nicely corrected. And now performing also this optimization, including these flux distortions, uh, we see that we can even further improve our gate fidelities, especially for this Fourier series pulse, which is now, despite being symmetric, um, has like the power of, like can express enough features and gets like to 99.7% fidelity and the piecewise constant pulse um, gets also to 0.2% fidelity. Where we are actually assuming now that we are kind of close to uh, the coherence limits that we have available on the chip. So yeah, so here we see that it's like also nice to have like this um, op closed loop optimization to get some informed choices and then also use the actual knowledge and to further improve that. So I guess probably this closed loop optimization, one of the interesting things is how long does it take or where do we spend time? And basically, um, so currently there is a lot of optimization happening here. Um, still a lot of time actually comes from the pulse scheduling and um, yeah, and preparation of the pulses and device communication, and then um, compare, combined with the actual runtime on the devices. So there we actually have to still um, improve a bit on the classical side, um, but I guess that will also improve um, in the new future. And so there we also have several strategies, such as using the sensitivity adaptation, which also Increase where we see now here this increase over time of how um, because we, at some point we need a lot of shots to measure it nicely, and we are already like we are using now these efficient features of Lab One Q such as the waveform replacement and like in the newer releases, hopefully which we will hopefully use very soon, um, is like the um, new pulse scheduling on the device. Um, okay, so. Now that we have our devices uh, or the two qubit gate, one of the things we want to look at is actually how to scale this up to higher, higher devices. So for example, we want to extend um, all of this to our current six qubit chip, um, which has basically a similar architecture. And one of the challenges we will be facing there is probably um, the flux crosstalk between um, different elements such as, uh, or especially the couplers, which is for neighboring ones, like of the order of 10%. And 
there, so basically if you apply a voltage on one thing, there you would expect it to be just stable, but it changes. Um, so basically that is then something we also have to tackle and place into our controller. So to summarize, I, like we are looking at the two qubit gates for employing controlled phase gates, have efficiently employed um, the randomized benchmark or the closed loop optimization and reached quite nice gate fidelities using these um, tricks and parameterizations. And with that, um, I would like to thank you for your attention and also my group at the Walter Meissner Institute.